Hi everyone and welcome to this month's computer music synth tutorial and this month we're looking again at the Yuhi Zebra CM plugin with some really cool things that we can do with formant filtering. So the first thing we need to do is load up your preferred door and make sure you've got an instance of the Zebra CM plugin plugged in and ready to go. As we usually do in these tutorials we need to initialize the plugin so we're going to go to the central point here we're going to click and select UH initialize which will give us a sound a little bit like this. At the moment, that's quite a confused sound because there's quite a bit going on. So we're going to make things a little bit more simplistic by firstly going to Oscillator 2 and the volume control on the top right hand side here, and we're going to turn the volume all the way down. That gives us this sound. We're now going to go to the Oscillator 1 section where it says Dual, and we're going to change that to Single. This will give us a single non-aliased waveform which will sound like this, and that's quite a centered sound as a consequence. The next thing we need to do is go to the filter section and turn off any modulation which is occurring which is being applied from envelope 2. So if we move over to the filter section where it says envelope 2 we need to change this pot to a 12 o'clock position which in the center readout will read 0. That will give us a sound like this. And as you can hear the sound has pretty much disappeared. So I'm going to turn the cutoff control up to around about the 10 o'clock mark so that we can hear what we're doing. Now one of the clever things about the filter on the Zebra is that there are many different flavors of filter to choose from. At the moment the setting is a low pass filter, so we're going to move over to the filter section where it's got this drop down menu box, it currently reads LP Excite, we're going to click on that and we're going to select Formant. The actual term Formant is associated with speech science, it actually directly relates to the human vocal tract. but in this context, it allows us to do some very cool things with the filtering and create some very human-like sounds. So in order to start exploring those sounds, we need to go to the filter section and firstly turn the resonance control all the way up. The next thing we need to do is go to the drive stroke vowel control. That actually stands for vowel, the V-O-W that it says there. And when you play a sound now, if you change that control, you'll hear this sound. So we're starting to hear all those beautiful vowel sounds emanating from the synth. Now the process we just did there would be really cool if we could play it under some degree of automation. And we're going to achieve this by activating an LFO to assist us with the task. The easiest way of doing this is by going to the unassigned pot which is just to the left of the cutoff control. If we click and hold on this, we have the opportunity to select LFO2. Meanwhile, the LFO section resides directly below the filter, and if we ensure that we are clicked on the legend that says LFO2, this means it will be looking at all the settings relating to that specific LFO. So having made those alterations, if we now go back to the filter section and the LFO2 amount pot, if we turn that up, we get a sound a little bit like this. Now the reason we're hearing that sound is because currently in the LFO section, you can see the waveform that we have selected is sine wave. If we change the waveform shape to, for example, a saw up, we get this sound. And of course we can select the opposite number which is saw down. Now that in itself is a really cool effect, however we want to exhibit even more control if we can. So further things that you can address at this point, for example we have the sync button that's at the top here, it's currently set to quarter note. This relates specifically to the tempo that you have set within your door, so if we set this to half note, the speed of the LFO modulation will double. And if we select whole note, it'll double again. We could speed things up considerably by selecting 16th note or 8th note. But for the moment we're going to stick with quarter note because that's just a sensible value to work with. Now one of the cool features about the LFO functionality of the Zebra plugin is that it allows us to create our own little sequences. And we do this by going to the waveform drop down menu again, but this time we're going to select user. Once we've selected user, you can see on the right hand side of the display, we get all these little nodules and we can click on these and create our own user shape. Once we've put in a few of these, we can play and we get a sound like this. Mm -hmm. 
and you can see the LFO actually being stepped through every time you play the note. Now we will speed things up a little bit at this point. I'm going to change this to eighth note so we get this effect. And of course the beauty is if there's any aspect of this that isn't quite right you can change it on the fly. It's also worth mentioning that as this is a modulatory function, it corresponds and directly relates to some of the settings that we've already made in the filter. So you might decide that you need to make some alterations here to get the best out of the sound that you're after. Now that's a really cool feature that we have available to us, but there are some other cool features relating to this step sequencer aspect of the LFO. First of all, we can move to the steps counter. This is the number of nodules we've got on this LFO cycle. So if we want to, we can change it to a simpler number, such as 8, at which point the number of noggins halves. Or we can change it to even fewer if we want to. But for the moment, I'm going to stick with 8. So that's quite useful, but something else that's very clever and really effective, if we go to the, the box that currently reads steps, if we change that from steps to lines, you can see that rather than stepping between each point, we now get these lines, and this is the effect we get as a consequence. And of course all of this can be changed in real time, so it's quite cool. Now the beauty of these kind of sounds is that they can actually form the backbone of an electronic music composition. So it's worth spending the time to get a sound which you think is really interesting and different, because it could actually form the absolute nucleus of any composition work that you might do. There's something very wonderful about a synthesizer that sounds a little bit like a human voice. So until next month, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again.